All right, it is time to head to the scrapyard. Actually, technically it's not exactly time. I'm heading to the scrapyard tomorrow. It's late in the afternoon, they're about to close. But I just got the truck loaded up with all the steel. I wanna show you how, the, how we're sitting here and then we'll talk about what else is gonna get loaded on in this load. So, let's see, I don't know how well y'all can tell on this this angle here. Yeah, you can kind of tell. I feel like most of the other loads I've been taking, the truck has been, you know, it sits like this normally. I've gotten it more like flat. I feel like we're squatting a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell at this angle. It's not extreme, but just from driving and from looking at the truck, this load feels somehow potentially heavier, at least a little bit than the, than the recent loads that I've taken. And it's a different, it's steel, but it's a different type of of stuff so you know previously all my loads have been all the stuff all those racks stacked up as, as high as the top of my truck we're not even at the top of the bed rails here but this stuff is is compact and dense and heavy it's all these i don't know what you want to call these things they're uh metal sticks they're using the tobacco system uh the curing system of these barns which i can show you all in a minute but what we're gonna do here is I got all the steel loaded up. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna swing out here early and load up all my non-ferrous, all my copper, brass, aluminum, stainless, all the fun stuff that'll sit in buckets on top. And then we're gonna head down to the yard and offload. And I'm hoping they can give me what's called uh, number one steel or prepared steel for all of this. So there's no contamination. This is all steel. There's no plastic. There's no other metals. And it's all pretty thick stuff. You know, we're, we're definitely thicker than an eighth of an inch, probably more like a quarter of an inch on most of this stuff. So they can typically give you a higher price for that type of material. The other uh, consideration though is they, if for prepared steel, they want it under four feet typically. These are like four feet, three inches long. There's no way it's worth my time to cut these to get the better rate. It's not that much higher of a rate, but uh, I'm really hoping that I can get a little higher price than just shred steel on all this. We'll have to see what they say at the yard, but uh, I'm pretty excited to take it in. Also just excited to get it out of the way. This was kind of the last of uh, those sticks. I don't know if anyone remembers from previous videos. They were the last of the metal trash in this bay. So I now have this bay fully freed up. And um, maybe I can show you guys. Try to show you where those sticks would have been used. So if we come into this curing barn, this one caught on fire a while ago, um, which we're gonna use our advantage because it means there's light coming into the hole in the ceiling. The rest of them are kind of dark. Although maybe we won't use this one because it doesn't have the, uh, the walls that I need to show you guys. Let's see what happens if we open up this bay door here. Here we go. Still a little bit of light. And so you can see these grooves, right? So all those racks that I've shown in previous videos, I can pull one up in a second to remind y'all what they look like. The rack has those spikes on it. That's for the tobacco leaves to hang on. They're exactly wide enough that they fit on those grooves. And the sticks go on the back of one of those, you know, it's one rack, one stick. You slide them all the way down. I'm kind of a visual guy, so we're just gonna go in this barn where I'm kind of using one, sort of as intended. You can see this is one of the racks here, okay? And you can see it's hanging right on the slip. Same on the other side. And so I think, I haven't seen these barns in operation, but what I can guess is that each one of these, this is two racks pushed together. Um, they're, they're kind of seized up, but you can see there's, there's no back. It's like three sides. They don't have a fourth side on the spiky end of these sticks. And so I think that one of those long metal sticks, it fits exactly in right here. You can see there's actually a tab right here where they can clip in. So I don't know exactly how all this worked, but you get the idea. Their equipment for curing tobacco, you can imagine these barns are full all the way, you know, there's one set of grooves there, another set of grooves there, another set of grooves and just stacked all the way with tobacco. And then they got this big heat pump thing to control temperature and I think pump a lot of heat in here to cure and dry the tobacco before they go to sell it. Sounds like not a fun operation, but uh, 
Anyway, I mean, tobacco is a really cool plant. I'm excited to grow a few tobacco plants in the garden, but I don't think I would have had any interest in being part of this large scale labor intensive tobacco that, that happened out here. I mean, it's still happening, not, not in these barns. These are all totally shut down. There's no power to them. You know, they're kind of falling back into the earth. Um, they're in okay shape for storage, but you know, that one's on fire and like just, they're definitely not usable for tobacco curing as far as I'm aware right now. There's not a whole lot of tobacco farming going on anymore in this part of the world. There's still some, but that's not really what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about scrap. These sticks also make good use of, uh, you know, they're good weights. So I am, I'm keeping a bunch of these around to be able to use as weights. I'm just looking now. I never really paid attention to this, um, this barn that's burned down. Those are old crushed up tobacco leaves, I'm pretty sure. I guess, I don't know, maybe leftovers from when this thing was on fire. I don't really know. I guess it must have been in use when it caught fire. I wasn't here. This is before my time. So that's where all this steel came from. I used this little cart to load them up. You know, I'd take the little cart down, go into each one of these bays. There, Like I said, there was a bunch of those sticks piled up right here. But then there was also stashes of them in each one of the, well, in a few of these sheds. This cart was sick, very handy to have, made it a lot easier to load. Really liking this thing. I've been using it for all sorts of stuff in the nursery lately. Yeah, we might get some rain tonight, so I don't want to load up all the non-ferrous right now. I got like all these copper windings and stuff. You know, everything's in buckets and bins. And so if I throw all these in the truck now, it'd be convenient because then I can just roll out tomorrow morning. But uh, I'm a little bit worried that they would get rained on. And then I'd have water in the buckets, which would make it very difficult to accurately weigh them and offload them at the scale. I'm sure the guys in the scale would be rather annoyed at that. So for me, it's going to be overnight. We'll load up for you guys. It'll probably be another 30 seconds to a minute. And you'll be watching me in the morning load up all this, uh, all the fun stuff. It should be a good run. I'm hoping to, hoping to get a good run here. This will be the first time in a while that I'm taking anything non-ferrous, anything non-metallic non-magnetic all the copper the brass the stainless all that sort of stuff it's also the first time in a long time that i might have anything that'll go in as prepared or number one steel back when i worked in construction i used to get a lot of that on job sites it was very common but uh i've been out of that game for a while now so it's kind of fun to have a, a, a more exciting trip other than your standard shred steel you know i love taking random steel in to get shredded but it's going to be fun and exciting to take some more high value stuff in not something I get to do a whole lot. And also, we'll see. This might be the last scrapping video for a little while. We're moving into spring here. It's almost March. And all these plants are getting ready to wake up. There is just a ton of work to be done in the nursery that I need to get to. So scrapping might take a back seat for a little while. It's good timing because uh, I, I got a lot of stuff cleaned up out of the way. There's still more scrap in these barns. But it's tucked out of the way in the barns and so I could slowly chip away at it you know when things get a little bit slower again really curious to see how much weight we have here like I said it feels like more than I've had recently you know my loads have been averaging like 12 1400 pounds with all those the racks and all the other random miscellaneous shred steel I've been bringing in this feels heavier it could just be how it's loaded somehow maybe it just feels heavier I don't know We'll find out. It's also going to be the last run on these tires. These uh, these tires are pretty clapped. We got a little bit of life left in them, but if I get in wet grass right now, I'm just slipping and spinning. And uh, I'm scheduled to go pick up new tires, get them put on the truck tomorrow. While it's going to hurt, but the truck's going to look really good. And uh, it's good timing because I want to go to the scrapyard before I get the tires, just in case. Anytime you go to the scrapyard, you always. It's always possible to pick up a nail or something in the tire. So it'd be good to get the last trip to the yard in for a while, then get new shoes on the truck and not have to go and immediately take brand new tires to the scrap yard. That would be painful. All right, so here we go. It's the next day, getting loaded up. I'm a little bit in a rush. As you can see, it's kind of overcast. We do have some heavy rain in the forecast this afternoon. I want to get to the yard before that rain hits. I'm assuming they'll probably close down if the rain gets too heavy. And also, I don't want to get too much rain <clears throat> water in all these buckets. That'll make it hard to unload them. So, didn't time it very well with the weather, but here we are. So, we got our, this is mostly cast aluminum here. A bucket of that, sheet aluminum. 
right here. This is all going to be probably dirty. I think it's painted. There's some nails in it. It's such a small amount of weight. See these little staples. It's not worth me. Somehow I got cut, I guess. It's not worth me trying to uh, get in there and pull all that crap out. This is probably going to go as, I don't know, aluminum breakage. It's mostly this aluminum wire. There's some bits of copper here, but there's also a lot of plastic and whatnot. Got some more of this aluminum wire here. That's what this is. You can see the silver bit right down there. It's the end of the wire. If I can get this thing to focus. Yeah, so this is all insulated aluminum wire. I got a bunch of these soda cans. Whole another tub of soda cans there. We got all this stainless steel tubing from a boat rack. This will be aluminum breakage here. So aluminum with, you know, pieces of steel and other crap in it, not worth uh, breaking down any further. This should all be clean stainless. I believe these are cast aluminum. We got a motor here. We got a bucket of motors here, big battery. And then the really juicy stuff is all the copper. So this is all my number one wire. Number one wire typically means you're about roughly 80% copper. Let's see if I can find a piece for you. And it's got, it's got to be that solid core stuff, typically. Can't get my camera to focus here. Come on. So this is one solid strand of copper. You can see just by looking at that, that's easily 80% copper in this wire. 80% copper wire, number one wire. When you bend it, it's going to stay in its shape, right? So it's very stiff. Now I have a little bit of this stuff, which is multiple strands. If I had a whole bucket of this, it might go as a higher grade, but this is just a few pieces that were kind of nasty that I didn't feel like stripping. Most of this stuff I had, I stripped and turned it into a little bit of copper in here to really prevent it from getting wet. This is going to be hopefully Bear Bright. So this is all that stripped, really thick cable. Okay, so we got all the Bear Bright. I got some other copper down in here. Various grounding rod sort of stuff in there. Let's see, then down here, this is the number two wire, number two insulated copper wire. This stuff is bendy. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus here. Really very bendy, right? So it doesn't like to stay in its shape. It's not as stiff as the number one. You can see here, there's multiple strands of fine, very fine hair-like wire in there. That always goes number two. That fine stuff, I guess something about when they smelt it, they lose a lot of the weight or so. I don't know exactly how it works, but this is less valuable to the scrapyard, so it's number two. I've, you know, and also like, so this is pretty stiff stuff right here, but it's multiple strands of insulated inside of it. So this will go as number two as well. And uh, then we got some junk wire over here, extension wire, right? Coming off of appliances and that sort of stuff. More of that over here. And uh, let me just break into those two bins up top. Probably would have been smart to take the video of all this before I loaded it in the truck, but this is all my hopefully number one copper pipe. This is all copper. There's no solder. There's no fittings. It's a little corroded and dirty, but no other material, just straight copper pipe. This is going to be Romex wire, housing wire. This stuff is pretty st stiff. Some of it can be uh, reasonably easy to strip with a knife and you can get this middle grounding wire out and then you're left with two big pieces of number one so this romex goes for less than number one but uh this stuff is pretty hard to strip this specific type every brand of romex housing wire is a little bit different so i'm some people strip it i'm not bothering with any of that windings from some motors that i took apart which is something i don't normally do i don't really have the tools to be efficient at it probably something i won't be doing again anytime soon but i wanted to try i had one massive motor i just wanted to see what it was like so i did it and uh it was interesting it was fun glad i did it like i said probably not going to do it again anytime soon but uh here's the truck all loaded up like i said we're trying to beat the rain so i'm gonna just hop i'm gonna go wash my hands clean this cut out i don't know how i, I don't know what i cut myself on it's just a little teeny tiny scratch and uh that's why i should wear gloves and then um which typically when I'm, I don't wear gloves often in gardening stuff, but when I'm doing scrap metal stuff, I do wear gloves because this stuff is sharp and rusty and dangerous. Other than right now, obviously I wasn't wearing gloves. Maybe I brushed up on this aluminum is pretty sharp. Anyway, 
get this loaded up, get in the truck, hop on the road, and I'll report back with pricing. Hopefully, I can get to the scrapyard today, because if not, all this crap's going to get rained on, and then I'm going to have to go try to get tires put on. I don't know if they're going to be able to lift my truck up with all this weight. I mean, I guess they're set up for doing bigger stuff there. They'll probably be all right. Hopefully, it didn't come to that. Well, I tell you what, that steel was pretty heavy. We wound up having just under 1,700 pounds in steel alone on this run. So I definitely got my workout in unloading this stuff. They didn't give us number one price. Uh, they gave us a better price than shred, though. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. I didn't ask too many questions. I was just happy that we weren't getting shred because, like I said, this stuff was a little bit over four feet, uh, kind of long. But anyway, we'll get more into that when we get into the looking at the receipt here in a minute and going over the totals. But one other major thing, you know, if you're new to scrapping and you have a lot of different types of material, like I have on this load where there's, you know, aluminum, copper, stainless, different types of steel, you know, when there's a lot of different types of items, it's definitely worth trying to go to the scrapyard at a time when they're slow. You know, think about weekdays other than Friday that are, you know, a little bit before lunch, like mid morning or like a little bit after lunch. You don't want to go right before closing. You don't want to go right when they opened up and you don't want to go on a Friday or a weekend or a holiday when they're super busy and overwhelmed. All right. So let's get into these prices. Old aluminum sheet. Uh, so that was a lot of the aluminum sheet, but also some of the stuff that I had in there is what I thought was going to be cast aluminum. Looks like they just lumped all that together. Fine by me. The price is pretty similar on that. Stainless steel prepared, that's you know the same as clean stainless steel, just means there's nothing else, no contaminants in there. You see, we didn't have a ton of that. Uh, we had 22 pounds and 4 pounds, total about $9. Uh, then we get into the copper insulated number 2, 45%. That's the junk wire extension wire that we're talking about there. Number 2 copper, that was the copper windings. We had about 14 pounds, that's a pretty good price. Uh, insulated copper number one, seventy percent recovery. So that's an interesting one, seventeen pounds. And I always thought number one wire was eighty percent recovery, and number two was like sixty percent recovery or something like that. But he lumped what I thought was number two into my number one and called it seventy percent recovery. So that's kind of a new one for me, but I'm totally fine with it. I think that's honestly doing us a favor. And then 16 pounds of aluminum breakage. Now, we'll see aluminum breakage again later on in the receipt. There was actually two buckets of aluminum breakage. Uh, one of them was pretty obvious, and I showed that, I believe, in the loading up the truck video. But there was another bucket that was kind of some weird-looking stuff. It was the ends of, like, the spliced ends of aluminum wire. So there was plastic and copper and other crap mixed in. All right, so continuing on down the list, number one copper, one of the things I was most excited about. We had 24 pounds. That was the copper pipe that you saw, as well as some of the copper grounding wire. Bear Bright, I'm excited they were able to give us Bear Bright. We didn't have a ton of that stuff, but 16 pounds, 335 a pound. I'm very happy with that. Copper Romex, uh, you know, 15 pounds of that, 152 per pound. That's pretty decent. Okay, you'll see more old aluminum sheet. I didn't do a good job of having all this stuff in the same part of the truck. And as we were unloading, uh, the scale guy, he took that first thing of aluminum sheet and didn't notice that I had more of it. So this was just more of that aluminum sheet material. Luckily, they were pretty patient with me at the scale. It was a pretty slow part of the day. All right, then our small copper electric motors, 48 pounds, 13 bucks, not bad. That one car battery was almost five pounds. Aluminum triplex, that's what they're calling that insulated aluminum wire that I brought in. So that big, you know, loop was worth $2. And more aluminum breakage that, again, we didn't catch at the beginning when we were unloading that first bucket of breakage. And by we, I mean, you know, me and this scale guy. You know, I saw him grab the bucket of aluminum breakage. I probably should have thought to tell him, oh, I have another bucket of that on the other corner of the truck. But I didn't. He didn't see it. Like I said, luckily they were patient, very nice. It was a it was a positive experience. And then aluminum cans. Some of you are probably like, why even bother? 36 cents a pound. There was three buckets full. It was only seven pounds, $2.50. Doesn't feel worth it. To me, you know, I'm not going out collecting these cans. I just, I drink a lot of that seltzer water. I could just throw them in with my recycling, but it is easy for me to separate them. And then the recycling yard doesn't have to deal with separating them. And I'm making an extra 250. 
I don't know. Is it worth it? I don't know. But I'm already going to the scrapyard anyway. I've got tons of space out here to store stuff. So I enjoy doing it. Anyway, that's that. And then the last was the steel. So we had there almost 1,700 pounds of steel. As you can see, 16,800. And you're going about almost nine or almost 10 cents a pound. $165 for the steel, which I'm excited about. But as you can see, that does not say number one. It's giving me unprepared, shearable material. And so uh, I think what's going on here, I'm not 100% sure, but it's not going in as shred, right? If it was shred, it would say shreddable material. Shearable, it means they're using a different machine. and They're not using a shredder to process this material. They're using the shear which, uh, you know, the shear, since it's a different machine, there's different handling costs associated with running material through that shearing machine. And then from there, we would presumably be able to go to the foundry. I think number one, steel, is that stuff, like I said, it has to be under four feet long. It has to be thick gauge, under four feet, and clean. We were thick, and we were clean, but we weren't under four feet. And so because of that, it's not able to go directly to the foundry. It has to be sheared first before it can be, you know, transported and go into the next stage of recycling. That's my understanding. I could be wrong. Either way, I'm glad that we got a higher price than shred steel. Steel is still kind of down in my neck of the woods. Uh, you know, could definitely, prices on steel have been higher before. It'd be nice if they were higher now, but I'm still pretty happy with how this went. And boy, that was a lot of weight. Definitely got a good workout hauling all that stuff out of the truck. So that's it for this one. That was a really good run for me. Rarely have I ever hit over 400. This might be my highest scrap trip before. I've hit definitely in the 300s before. Back in you know my construction days, hauling a lot of that grade A number one steel when steel prices were better. But uh, And when I had even more of it. But this was a really good run. Happy about it. And excited to share it all with you all here.